Thank you very much, uh, Acting PS. Uh, heads of missions, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we thank you for uh, your invitation to be here with you this morning and to be briefed on the physical location of the ministry and the various uh, interests that we look after. It'd be interesting to know that yesterday afternoon I, I undertook to complete the efforts of the former Prime Minister in his attempt to uh, reconsolidate the region, uh, particularly in the interest of uh, the Pacific Islands Forum, uh, Fiji, a chair. Uh, we would like to uh, pursue that very, very quickly before we hand over the chair to the Cook Islands in a matter of uh, a few weeks. Uh, we have received uh, congratulate, congratulatory messages from uh, heads of government, and I thank our, our apostles, apostolos who are out there, uh, being sent to uh, uh, re maintain good relationships with those friendly countries. And through you, may I uh, convey my thanks and gratitude to the heads of government where you represent the interests of Fiji and also convey their messages and uh, their wishes in our bilateral relationships with those countries you represent us in. Thank you for the work you have done, and we also uh, look forward to uh, continued good relationships with those countries and heads of government. I didn't have a, uh, an address prepared, but I thought I would just speak from the hymn we sang this morning. This is the aim of government and every ministry, but particularly the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, as what very clearly read out by Reverend James Bogwan this morning in our, in our readings, both from the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's all about relationships. It's all about our work to promote good relationships, not only, as was made very clear in the Old Testament uh, reading, not only to our own, our kind, our people, our citizens and in the diaspora, but to all, all the countries you represent us in and all the people in those countries. And this is the aim and the mission of a government and every government. Verse 1, it calls on us to live together peaceably. You probably recall one of the uh, announcements I made toward the end of the campaign season. Let love shine as a beacon, as a guiding principle in the matters that the party I, have, I, have, I lead uh, working towards elections and in the government in case we win the majority, which we did not, but we got, for the first time, elected a prime minister on the floor of our parliament. Since independence in 1970, this is the first time we have had to elect a government on the floor of our parliament. And this is what governments are all about. And this is what we, as a ministry, in Fiji and abroad, should be doing. We want people to live together peaceably. And I thank the, uh, our permanent rep in the UN for keeping us abreast. And I think we should be looking at other ways of contributing to bringing about peace in uh, Russia and the Ukraine. I was going to ask Prun what else is there? We're looking at it from the United Nations point of view. 
What else is there available? You may not know that the Carter Center approached me personally to be part of a group to go and try and avoid Gulf War II. And I still have that, that uh, connection with friends in high places, in other countries, who can work together and work towards peace where there is none or there is broken. And this is what we want to do. Mendes Artico Bogovican, to live together peaceably in our own countries and internationally. Only then can we look forward to getting the blessings of God. And it reflects a passage that has been translated to mean where there is unity, God commands his blessings. When we live together peaceably, we can look forward to the blessings of God. Our representatives abroad and those of us that work in the home ministry here in, in Suva. It is right and proper that we live together peaceably with love. Sakilikili Mendavei Lomani. Although we are now constitutionally uh, what does the constitution say? We are what? We are a secular state. This one points at Christian living. Let us aspire to live our lives loving one another as Jesus taught. You're not trying to make Christians of every, of every citizen. We live the life as Christ would have us live. This is his teaching. Calling on each of us to help one another, to be a brother to our neighbors, to be a friend to our neighbors, to be a neighbor to our neighbors. Brothers and sisters, particularly Veiralenga, Serarawa, those who are having difficulties and those who are in pain, emotionally, physically, or whatever way. They are having problems and pain. They are the ones we are called to serve as a government, as a ministry and our missions abroad. And those that are having real difficulties, how do we do that? We tread the way of Jesus. The way of Jesus, or the way that Jesus had trodden. When he showed love for the world. No race, no creed, everyone. Menona vale tambu naklo. God resides here in the world and in the universe. In the last verse, then we'll be able to release those that are incarcerated in their minds, mentally and physically.
This week we finalized the uh, Justice and Legal Services Commission. And they are the ones that would recommend to the Prerogative of Mercy, they are the, and they form the Prerogative of Mercy Commission to look at those that have been incarcerated for very long periods of time. It will be done by them. The government responsibility is to set up the machinery. They do it according to their rules and procedures. So that freedom and peace may grow in our country, may grow in our nation. Mitumbu na lalanga na sautu. Joy and peace. Na alo mama rao na bagadimu. And good, true relationship with Jesus. I went to a, a national prayer breakfast in, uh, in Washington. And on the last night, two speakers from Kosovo addressed the meeting. About 4,000 leaders, kings, presidents, prime ministers, congressmen and senators from all over the world, and members of parliament. Interestingly, the biggest group that comes to the National Prayer Breakfast has been the group from Japan. These two who came from uh, Kosovo spoke on the last night. One is a Muslim, one a Christian. They fought in the same sector trying to kill each other in the Civil War before the United Nations promoted the ceasefire and supervised elections, and they had elections. They joined the two political parties, basically the Christian party and the, the, uh, and the uh, Muslim party. They won their seats, one sat in government, one sat in opposition. But when parliament sat, they all were accommodated, they are still accommodated in one hotel, in one big restaurant where they all have their meals. And each morning when they came down to breakfast, they would avoid the table, each would avoid the table where the other person was. But they noticed, they, they both noticed that they were praying, probably saying grace before they ate their meals. And they observed each other praying in their rooms or outside their rooms, in their balconies. One morning they couldn't avoid ending up at the same table. So they sat down and quietly made their orders and started talking. I noticed you pray, and yes, and I noticed you pray too, yes. So they talked about their prayers and they started talking about Jesus. Who do you say Jesus is? Oh, Jesus is a prophet. And you? I say Jesus is the son of God. No, we don't agree with that. So they started talking and said, well, they talked about Jesus and Mary. I said, yeah, we know Miriam. She's in our Quran, the Holy Quran. They started talking. So they decided finally to just focus on the person of Jesus of Nazareth. So they became very good friends. And they pronounced the name of their country as Kosovo. Not as I pronounce it, Kosovo. Towards the end of their address, the organizers <coughs> came around. They said, where's Steve? He's at the back. And I was sitting at the back with a little Fiji flag, last table in the back, because those who have been to the prayer breakfast sort of get relegated to the back, back seat. And those that have come for the first time, up the front. Where's Steve? He said, Bleh. So he came around looking for the Fiji flag. There was a little flag in the back. 
came to, uh, to me and said, Steve, you got to get up and give the closing remark. No, I didn't prepare anything. No, you have to get up. So I went up, stood behind him. To the side were the two uh, friends from uh, Kosovo. And when it was time for me to get up, I came out. Your Majesties, Your Excellencies, Honorable Prime Ministers, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry I didn't prepare a speech for this. But the name of the country that our two brothers come from, those two who have just told us their story, they call it Kosovo. Where I come from in Fiji, that is a Fijian word. Kosovo. It means crossover. Most of you in these halls, because there's a big hall at the Washington Hilton, and there are other halls connected like this. And uh, High Commissioner in Wellington has been there many times with me. I don't know whether he was there on this occasion I'm talking about, but uh, Philip Tarkinkini, Kenny, the Queen Riketi was sitting with me at the back table. Uh, Himatlodia, some of you may know, was with us. And Vidya Lakan, one of the regular uh, members of the group we go up with. Hindus, Muslim, Christian, we all go up to pray in the spirit. And we focus on the person of Jesus of Nazareth. I got up and said uh, what they said about their own lives, that they fought and tried to kill each other. The United Nations stepped in and called for the ceasefire. Both sides obeyed. There was a collection of weapons and all, and then elections uh, supervised by the United Nations. And they won their seat and fought against each other in parliament, then eventually they came together. They're coming together in Fijian would mean that each of them Kosovo the floor, cross the floor from the government side to the opposition side, from the opposition side to the uh, government side. Kosovo means to cross over, I cross over from the side of the of the river to the other side, of Kosovo and Uzi of Kosovo Nasala. Most of you here in this hall know me as a coup leader in my country in 1987. I've been inspired by these two brothers to go back and apply this word, Kosovo, in my own life at home. I'm going to cross over from my side as a victor of the coup to the victims of the coup. I'm going to cross over from my side of the, of the river or the road from the aggressor to the aggrieved. And I promise them, this time next year, when you all congregate together for the next prayer breakfast, I'll tell you the story of my crossing over. I came back and I still had the tambua with which the uh, officers and uh, NCOs and all ranks of uh, Kumbuna had installed me as commander in the place of Ratu Nailajkau, whom we had ousted. I still had the tambua, so they took it up to Common House. He was president at the time. I gave it to him. He said, this is the tambua with which I was installed in your position as commander. Uh, very good chat. Uh, I don't normally drink grog like we do here in the morning, but he ordered uh, Angona to be brought up to the office, and uh, I made my peace with him. At the time, Rotepeli Nganilau was minister for home affairs in the interim government. Came down to home affairs and government buildings 
and they gave him another big one. He apologized for what we had done to Ratu Serpenayang and Lao, removing him as president. The fact that we brought him back uh, as governor general, the fact that we brought him back to be governor general got nothing to do with it. Eh? It was the first one. And then I had a, another big one to, to take to uh, VCC. The older brother of Dr. Mbavandra was still there at the time. And Ratu Iloilo called the heads of the Abusas. He had just finished serving as our president and had moved back into uh, VCC, and he called them all together, and I presented my Matri Nisau, my Soro. Normally, the Toke Nakelo would be the one to receive it. But on this occasion, wearing his T-shirt, round neck, with Dr. Mahavandra's picture, in protest of my appearing in Bunda, it was a T-shirt they wore in 1987 during the campaign. He got up, and instead of Toke Nakelo receiving the tambua, he got up, Toke Weratakala, to receive it. The general apology to our Indo-Fijian brothers and sisters was done with Ratuililo at the car park of the National Stadium. We had a national day of prayer which was not very popular with our Prime Minister at the time, but we had it anyway. But he asked me to go and address that, and we did that. So when I went back to the prayer breakfast the following morning, the following year, I told them, I promised this last year, and I've done it. So I was, uh, I've been at peace, and uh, I was encouraged to uh, stand for election again. I stood, and a lot of people, said to me, not many people fight elections at 74. You said, not many people. That means nobody. You said, not many. I'm one of the few that can stand and fight for an election at 74. Now I'm back in the office, and it's very, very difficult, much more difficult than the first time. But the first time, as I was allowed to make mistakes because I didn't know. Now I know. Nobody expects me to make any mistakes. So I'm very cautious. We have to be very cautious. If people out there think we are too slow in doing what we're doing, ask them to be patient with us. Rome was not built in the day. And rebuilding Rome took a lot longer than it took to build Rome. So uh, now at the beginning of our journey together in this ministry, I call on each and every one of you. It's a new start. Cross over from wherever your prejudiced position has been. Try and understand the other person. Only then, can we truly sing the hymn and also expect the blessings promised in, it, in the words? Call on you to be loyal, serve faithfully, serve diligently, look after the people you're supposed to be looking after. You're all here for Fiji and Fijians. God bless you.